this week I found some really cool looking gadgets for bikes. So I bought eight altogether to try. And first up on our list is... LED wheel lights. They came in this box, it's quite small, but open it up, and we've got these two units here, with a load of other bits and pieces. So this is the main body. There's a push button here for turning them on and off. This is a whole length of LEDs all coiled up. And this end unscrews so you can pull out the battery cage. Mine came with batteries, so I clipped them in. Then slid it back into the unit, they only go one way, and screwed the cap back on. And to make sure it was working, I tried turning it on. You can alternate between flashing lights and just on. And now we know they work okay, we'll be fitting them to the bike in a minute. But first I installed batteries into the other one too, so we've got one for each wheel. To fit them, I found it easiest to turn the bike upside down. Then you need to slide over one of the elastic bands they supply you with and thread the unit through your wheel spokes. Sit it on the hub, stretch the elasticated band around the hub and over the other side of the unit, like this. And that firmly mounts it to the wheel. So next we need to start uncoiling and arranging the LEDs. You start by wrapping it around one of the spokes like this, working your way up to the rim. Then undo the coil a little, wrap the wire around the end of one spoke and in and out of the next. Alternate back and forth as you work your way around the whole wheel. It does take quite a bit of time, but I quite enjoyed doing this. It's long enough to do 29 inch wheels, but if you're doing a smaller wheel like this, you can just cut the wire off when you get to the end. But instead, I just carried on going round a little bit more until I got to the end of the line. Then make sure the end is wrapped around securely so it won't come undone. And there we go, that's the front wheel done. Do the back one in exactly the same way. Take care with the chain when you're installing the unit. And once you've fitted them all, try switching it on and giving the wheel a spin. Of course, they don't have much of an effect in the daytime, but when it's dark outside, that's when the magic happens. Check it out. Pretty cool, huh? They really make your bike stand out. They look just so cool. I definitely prefer them on solid colour rather than flashing. And these lights are just white, but you can also buy them with coloured LEDs. That would be really cool. What colour lights would you like best? Next on our list is... A handy little multi-tool. This one came in this box, and inside is this nice little pouch, which holds the tool. It's really nice and compact, and it encompasses 20 tools in one. Just push them around like this, and select which one you want to use. It includes seven hex keys, a couple of Torx, a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver. There's a valve core tool, so you can undo it or install one if you need to. There's different spoke wrenches, so you can tighten one up if you find a loose one. There's even a chain tool, in case you need to remove a link or swap out a broken one. So you're really really covered for a lot of eventualities with this in case you have a mishap while you're riding. There's even an 8, 9 and 10 millimeter wrench, so it's really versatile but still lightweight and really nice and neat kept in this pouch. Next on the list is… Slime? Yeah, check this out, it's a green slime for your tyres, which should help to prevent and repair punctures. It can be used for all sorts of things like bikes, prams and even wheelbarrows. So I'm looking forward to trying it out. To view the instructions, you just peel back the label like this. So to use it, first of all we need to remove the air from our inner tube. And depending which valves you have, depends how you do it. If you remove the top from the slime bottle, there's actually a built-in valve core remover tool for Schrader valves. But for this Presta valve, I used my multi-tool to remove the core. And with the air removed, we can take the seal off our bottle of slime. And check that out, it really is like gooey slime. Then screw the lid back on and peel back the label to access this short bit of tube they supply. We need to remove the cap and push the pipe over the nozzle like this. It says in the instructions to fill the tube up with the valve facing slightly uphill, so I slid the tube on and started giving it a squeeze. But the tube isn't a very good fit on the valve stem, and instead of going inside, the slime went around the side. It's obviously been designed for the slightly larger diameter Schrader valves. So to install it here, I wiped it all off clean, then wrapped a little bit of insulation tape around to increase the diameter. So now when I push the tube on, it's a nice snug fit. And this time when I squeezed the bottle, you can see the slime going inside. Ha! That's a lot better. There's a guide for how much you should install for each tyre, and for this one you need half a bottle each. So when you're at the right level, you can remove it. I had to just unwind the tape, give it a little clean off, and refit the valve. Next up we need to attach our pump, and inflate the tyre again, close up the valve, refit the cap, then finally spin the tyre to distribute the slime evenly around the inner tube. And that's done. Just don't forget to do the front wheel too. And for this one I found I didn't even have to bother wrapping it in tape. I just wound a bit of this paper around and that made a good enough seal. So it's nice and easy. But how well does it actually work? I'm going to test it on this inner tube. The slime's inside ready and I'm going to puncture it with a pin. 
Oh wow, look at that. A tiny little bit of the slime has come through, but it sealed it instantly. I'm impressed. Let's try again. Yeah, exactly the same. And I guess if the tube is pushed up against the inside of the tyre as well, it would probably work even better. But I want to try something bigger. This screwdriver is absolutely huge compared to the pin. It's about 3 millimetres in diameter, so I'm going to force it in through. And yeah, it's in. And when I remove it... Wow, look at that. A little bit of slime did squirt out, but that really has sealed it. That's seriously impressive. Next up on our list is this. Kids Light and Sound Effects. It came on this card and includes 25 sound effects altogether. They're listed here on the back. So I took it off the packaging and this is what we've got. You can see there's four buttons on the top, the lights at the front, these two rubber straps underneath and another button at the back. Pull the tab out to connect the batteries and it's ready to use. So this button at the front cycles through the different lighting effects. There's six different settings and with this up and down button we can cycle through all 25 sound effects as well as the bell. There's all sorts of things like a police siren, a fire engine, a motorbike, A helicopter, a fart, a burp, a rooster, a lion, elephant, a steam train, reversing beeper, and all sorts of things. What a great unit! And once you've selected your sound effect, this button plays it. And you can also select three different sound levels using this button here on the back. To adjust the volume. And the little button here resets everything. It also comes with this, which is really cool, and I'll show you what it does in a second. But first, to attach it to your handlebars, just sit it on like this. Then the straps wrap around underneath and clip on the tab like this. So it really is quick and easy, and it feels nice and secure too. Now of course, the problem is it's quite a long stretch for little hands to reach over and press the buttons, so that's where this comes in. It's a wired remote. It plugs into the bottom here. Then just wrap any excess wire around the bars and secure the button in place with the fastening strap. Now it's a lot easier to reach. And once you've selected your sound effect, you can use the button to trigger it. How cool is that? And what a fun accessory for a kid's bike. And the only way I think it could be improved is if it had a red and a blue flashing light too to use with the siren sound effect. But next up is this bike bag. Now this looks really cool. It's a bike bag complete with mobile phone holder. There's dual rubber zippers which help keep the bag water repellent. Open it up and inside there is a rain cover should you need it. There's quite a lot of storage and we can open up the straps here, remove the card and insert your phone instead. It's got this really sensitive touch screen film over the front which works really well. At the bottom of the bag here there's a small port which allows you to pass a cable through, maybe for headphones or a battery for your light. And there's three velcro straps for attaching it to your bike. It just sits at the front of the top tube here with a strap each side. Wrap them around and thread them through the buckle, then tighten them down. They give you ample length of velcro so you can cut it to length, or just thread it underneath and go round again. And there's another strap to attach at the front. Once it's installed, I found it really secure. I was able to wobble it and shake it, and there's no way it was going to come off. So open it up and fill it with whatever you need. There's the multi-tool, a tyre lever, an inner tube, you might want a snack or some energy gel. And I'm even packing some lightweight clothing, which I'm wrapping up in the rain cover. Install your phone in the top. These large Velcro straps are nice and secure. Then zip it up. It's really nice having the map down there in front of you. There's even a little sun visor down the front. And you're good to go. Next on our list is... A phone holder. Now, I know the bag we've just seen holds a phone, but if you prefer a dedicated phone holder for your bike, this one attaches to your handlebars. And it comes with six different coloured reusable bands. The unit itself feels nice and sturdy and well made. There's this clamp here at the back for mounting. There's a knuckle joint here so you can angle your screen. The holding arms adjust for different sized screens. And there's even a little shelf here at the bottom for your phone to sit on if it's small enough. These flexible bands are really cool and I'll show you how we use them to grip our phone in a minute. It comes with these six different coloured ones all together, so you can choose which colour you want to use. Maybe you want to match the colour of your bike. And to swap them out, you just unscrew the nut here and separate the joint, then refit it with whichever colour you've selected. 
Fitting it to your bike is really easy and it doesn't require any tools at all. You just open up the clamp here by undoing the nut. There's a rubber strip inside which helps it to grip your handlebars tightly whilst also protecting them. You need to angle it roughly to the right direction, then place the nut back on and tighten it up. They even supply you with a shorter bolt to use if you're installing it on smaller diameter bars. And once it's tight, you can see it really is very secure indeed. And now we're able to slacken off the nut here to adjust and fine tune the carrier. So, when you're installing your phone, you might want to use the little drop down shelf to sit it on. Or if your phone's larger, like this one, I've clamped it nice and central, then use the band to stretch over each corner of the screen, which really helps secure it and hold it in place. I found it works really well and really grips the phone tightly. Although having your phone out in the open like this does make it more vulnerable to bad weather or even potentially getting stolen. But what I do really like is if you want to, you can slacken off the nut at the back and rotate the screen so it's horizontal instead of vertical. Cool. Whichever takes your preference. Pretty cool, huh? Next up is this. A bike chain cleaner. Mine came as part of a whole bike cleaning kit. There's all sorts in here. Different types of brushes. This one's for the wheels and tyres. Some small ones for getting into nooks and crannies. These are for getting in between the gears. And there's various other cleaning implements. But we're going to test out this. So this little thing is the bike chain cleaner. You slide off the top and remove it like this. And inside we've got these various geared wheels and brushes. These are going to rotate and clean the chain from all angles. This seems really cool. And there's even a brush in the cap. And when we put it back together, the top is kept in place with this handle that slides over and locks them both together. That's a really clever design, but let's see how well it works. So we open it up and sit it underneath the chain like this. Clip the lid back on top like this so the chain's running through the middle. Attach the handle which will lock it all together and give you something to grip. Then pour in some chain cleaner through the holes in the top. To use it, we hold the handle and start spinning the pedals backwards. This is drawing the chain through the cleaner, which is spinning all the gears and brushes inside and giving it a really thorough wash. You can see it going in down here and coming out the other side slightly cleaner. I did find every now and again it snagged a little bit. I think you need to make sure you're holding it nice and straight. I rotated the pedals quite a few times and after a minute or two, you can see it's definitely looking a lot cleaner. So I took off the handle, opened up the top and removed the unit from the chain. And take a look at that. That's such an improvement. Check out the before and after. Pretty clean, huh? Ready for some oil. Next on our list is carbon wrap. So I'm going to try customising the front fender on this bike. And to do it, first of all I undid the screws to remove it from the bike. Then we need to give it a good wash. It needs to be nice and clean with no mud. And I'm going to give it a new look with this carbon fibre effect wrap. First off I'm cutting off a strip a little bit bigger than the fender. Then there's an outer film we can peel off. And because this bends and contours in different directions, we need to warm up the wrap to help it bend. So I'm using a hairdryer. Once it's warmed up, it feels a bit more malleable, so I peeled it off and started sticking it down. You need to massage the air bubbles out as you're working it down, and I found it best to frequently add a bit more heat from the hairdryer. Once I got the top done, I started working my way around the sides. And even though there's some quite severe curves and bends, I was able to pull it all down tight so it's nice and smooth. Once you're at this stage, you could just trim off all the excess so it's smooth with the lip. But I decided to fold it back in on itself so it's stuck on the inside. And when I finished, it looked like this. Pretty carbon, huh? And the last thing to do was cut out the holes. And there we are, ready to fit back to the bike. Screw it back on. And it's got a whole new look. So which one of these gadgets was your favourite? Let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see some really cool viral TikTok gadgets, like this amazing crushing flask or this green morphing fidget toy, you can click on the link here to watch my video. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching.